because of the contrast that you've lived, you've asked for more than most do. But because of your unwillingness so far to care about how you feel, you keep looking at what is. So you've asked over here, but you've stayed over here. It's like the analogy of the train. So life causes you to ask for this, but then you don't believe it. And so then you don't believe it. So you ask again, but you still don't believe it. These are engines that we're putting on opposite ends of your train. So then it's harder. So you ask again, but you still don't believe it. And so it's harder still. So you ask again, but you still don't believe it. And so the stakes just get higher and higher and the tension just gets greater and greater until after a while you just get worn down with that. See, so if you could believe us when we tell you that you couldn't feel this bad if you hadn't asked for a lot, some of you may not be aware of Jerry, Jerry Esther's sweetheart made his transition about five years ago and for some time following, Esther was not feeling so good. A lot not feeling so good. And one day, and the thing that was so interesting and maybe may seem odd to you that Esther didn't feel better more of the time because Esther had been translating for Abraham all of these years. She could hear Jerry when she would get into that high flying place. So quite often, he'd say something to her that she'd hear really clearly. And then she'd notice that he wasn't in the room with her. And then she'd, in the absence of him, feel bad. And then she couldn't hear him. And so it was that sort of game that was going on. So one day, after feeling particularly bad for a while, Jerry said to Esther, you know, this is going to sound weird to you, but I think it's the only way that you're going to hear me right now. So I'm going to say it in this way. I can tell how much you love me by how bad you feel right now. Because if you didn't love me this much, you couldn't possibly feel that bad. In other words, he's gone, oh, now what? But that wasn't the way it was for Esther because they were integrated in so many things. So don't let that analogy hurt your heart because it's not hurting Esther's heart anymore at all. But the reason that we give you this analogy is because we want you to understand that when you really, really, really care about something, its absence really, really, really bothers you. If you have a small desire and it's not coming, you have a small negative emotion. But if you have a big desire and it's not coming, you have a big negative emotion. And so it's about that. It's about going for a while because you see, you can't stop doing step one. You can't stop asking for more and your inner being's not ever going to stop finding the more that you've asked for and reflecting it to you vibrationally. So you've got to start reaching for more thoughts that do feel good. And the reason that most people don't do it is because the momentum of those negative thoughts is just longer practiced. Do you know a belief is just a thought that you continue to think? So that's why we start with deeper beliefs within you. We say you were before this body and you say, oh, that sounds good. And then we say, and you still are, even though you're in this body, if we can get you to just focus on the basics of it, then you'll begin to feel better. So. It's not a bad sign when you feel bad. It's a good sign when you feel bad because it means you've asked for something that you can have. Okay. So I, I understand when you say that our desires like shoot the rocket and then it goes into the vortex and now it's becoming bigger and bigger. So I have ginormous vortex then. I mean, <laughs> huge. Yes, you do all kinds of crap in it, which is the story that we just told you. If it weren't that big and your inner being weren't there and your inner being didn't know it and your inner being wasn't attracting to itself on your behalf, then you would feel no negative emotion when you don't go. So how do I go? You have to start with things that don't matter so much. You have to show yourself that you are a creator. You have to find something, some thought that doesn't have so much negative accumulations of engines going in the opposite direction. You have to let the universe show you that it's aware of you. Let your inner being show you that you are an object of attention that is loved and being helped. You have to get off the subjects that have you paralyzed. You have to find some way to break the log jam, find some way to get the momentum going. I mean, I drink wobble juice. <laughs> And I do try to like, I guess, cope, but it doesn't work. So when you say it doesn't work, 
which end of the track did you plunk an engine down on? Wonk. When you say, I try to cop, which end of the train did you plunk an engine down on? So when you say, I want it to get better, plunk. I don't think it will, plunk. But wouldn't it be nice if it did, plunk? I would like that a lot, plunk, plunk, plunk. Probably won't, plunk. But maybe, plunk, plunk, plunk. I think I won't think about it anymore now, plunk, plunk, plunk. I think I'll take a walk, plunk, plunk, plunk. So when you go to sleep at night, all the momentum stops. That momentum stops. This momentum doesn't. All that momentum stopped when you slept because the part of it that was coming from your conscious mind is inactive. The part of it that your inner being is tending to still is going. Nice to know about that big vortex, isn't it? When you wake up in the morning, if you pick up an old familiar thought, plunk, then you don't allow yourself to get any of this feeling. It wouldn't take much. It would only take a day or two of when you wake up saying, wait a minute, the momentum stopped while I slept, and now I'm just going to do my best to not think about things, not get too serious about anything. It would not take long. All right, so we have some questions for all of you, especially you, but for all of you. Especially you, but for all of you. Do you understand the concept of momentum? Do you ever feel paralyzed in your own life? Do you ever get up with things that you need to do and just spin around in circles and don't really get anything done. <laughs> and while it's happening, do you talk to yourself sternly? <laughs> I should be getting something done. Does it help? Does it inspire you? So the question that you ask, such a good question, is, how do I break the log jam? How do I break the log jam? The log jam that has already been established by my own thoughts. How do I break that? So you start with the basics of momentum. You start with some thought that doesn't have much resistance attached to it already. And you just concentrate on that thought because a thought that is not contradicted will gather its own momentum. We want to demonstrate that with our train. You think you thought about anything. You choose one plunk. Only think about that, plunk. Just focus on it. Don't take your eyes off of it. Whatever it is, just focus on it. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's a lover. Maybe it's sex. Maybe it's eating something. Doesn't matter what it is. Just focus on it. Just focus on it. Don't let your mind move away from it. Just focus on it. Just focus on it. And once you cross approximately the one minute mark, that train will start moving. It will. But you usually don't let it get 16 seconds. You usually think about it, plunk, so you don't get any momentum going. And so, do you know, we love you so much, you have a contradictory thought to every thought you think, just about. Watch yourself and notice how often you are contradicting your own thought and stopping your own momentum. So the other day, Esther was in one of those moods. And she said to herself, there are so many things that I need to be doing right now. And I don't feel like doing any of them. Our goal wasn't to get her to feel like doing those things she didn't want to do. We didn't think she should do those things she didn't want to do. Do you know that's what's got most of you paralyzed? You think that you're supposed to want to do things you don't want to do. So you're thinking, when you say, I should do it, which end do you put that engine on? Does it go over here or over here? I should do that. I'm bad for not doing that. I'm disappointing myself and others. Your inner being is calling you toward all of this enlightenment and all of this fun and all of this clarity because your inner being knows where you are in relationship to everything that you want. So Esther is feeling that sort of paralyzation because she has set some engines on the other end. I don't feel like doing that, but I should. I don't feel like doing that, but I should. And you know what was really interesting? Such an interesting observation for Esther that not only was she not about to do any of those things that she didn't want to do? She could not think of one thing she wanted to do. <laughs> she couldn't think of one thing that she wanted to do. Now she has options. She's got a new bicycle that's pedal assist that she can go up steep hills on. That didn't seem like very much fun. <laughs> she has a beautiful 
beautiful little car in her garage that goes zero to 60 in about half a second, <laughs> begging for her to drive it. She dusted it off every now and again. That didn't inspire her. She couldn't think of anybody she wanted to call. So she sat down and she thought, I'm in a funk. I'm paralyzed. All that stuff I need to do and I don't feel like doing any of it. And then she thought, be nice if I could get a thought moving. And then she thought, thoughts do move. And then she thought, I could just find some thought that I'd like to think about. And she thought, but I can't think of any thoughts that I want to think about. <laughs> and then she thought, but there must be some thought that I'd like to think about. And then she thought, but I can't think of any thoughts to think about. And then she thought, I should make my bed. And then she thought, I don't feel like making my bed. <laughs> and then she thought, maybe I'll go outside. And then she thought, no, it's raining outside. And then she thought, well, maybe I'll go in this room. And so she went in that room and she thought, I don't really care about being in this room either. And then she thought, am I just going to sit here and die? Is this what no life flowing through you is really like? Is this what it feels like to have no life flowing through you at all? There must be something that I might be interested in. There surely has to be something that I could be interested in. There has to be something in this beautiful world that would catch my interest. There, I just know there's something in this world that I could be interested about. And then the word Pinterest came into her mind. <laughs> Pinterest and interest. Now, Tracy's been after her to look at Pinterest. Tracy sends her things from Pinterest all the time. Esther, she didn't ever want to look at Pinterest because she did not want to be distracted from the things she needed to do. <laughs> Esther's been saying for a very long time, I have so much to do, I don't need any of these frivolous hobbies. In fact, every time Tracy's on Pinterest, Esther thinks she should be doing something more productive. <laughs> So Esther had herself in a real box because there was nothing that she wanted to do that she, sh she thought she should only do things that she should do. And she didn't want to do anything that she should do. Pinterest is in her mind. She thought, hmm. So she downloaded the app. <laughs> was far simpler than she thought it was going to be. And then she made up a username and a password. And then it showed her some things. And then there was a search bar and she thought, hmm, I wonder what I could look at. And then it showed her some options. And then she clicked on a recipe. Ooh, that really looked good. <laughs> and then she pinned it. And then she labeled it. And then it showed her a, a whole bunch more of those same things. It's like law of attraction in Pinterest. <laughs> and then Esther thought, anything that I could want to think about it. And then she thought, Ooh, I'm looking for some art for my Spencer house. So she looked up art Renaissance and all this stuff came up and all of these artists and she started clicking three hours later, <laughs> three hours later, Esther had pinned not fewer than a thousand things <laughs> and labeled each one of them in neat little categories. Her juices were flowing. And then, Ooh, then she just got the best idea. She's looking through all of these classical pictures not realizing that she really didn't even know who many of these artists were. And she focused upon the artist of Monet and saw this still picture of these flowers. And Esther thought, whew, I'm going to take this picture down to my company that makes flower arrangements for me. And I'm going to have them make me that flower arrangement, that one right there. And then she couldn't get in her car fast enough. <laughs> And zero to 60 in one second. In other words, all it takes is a little priming of the pump. All it takes is first of all, knowing that momentum will carry you and giving yourself a chance to do it. Just making the decision. You don't want to be in a funk. Just making the decision. You don't want to be in a funk. Law of attraction won't let you be. We've gone way over time for this segment. The cameras are screeching at the end of their tape rolls. We're going to take segment of refreshment and we know that you're in the place that you were asking for. Just take it easy. Good time for a segment of <laughs>